Mark's not here today. He's sick, so I'm <laughs> filling in the best I can. Can everybody stand for us for the first hymn? Uh, we'll change it from what's in the bulletin. It's going to be when we walk with the Lord or trust and obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way while we do his good will. He abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet we will sit at his feet or we'll walk by his side in the way what he says we will do where he sings we will go never fear only trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in jesus than to trust and obey and now the call to worship Please join me in the call to worship. Are there any among you suffering? Are any cheerful? Then let us sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? Then let us turn to each other for God's healing touch. The prayer of faith will save us. God will lift us up. Okay, please be seated. Y'all switched seats on me. <laughs> Roger came over this way. You guys came all the way over this way. I'm really messed up. Welcome to Good Shepherd United Methodist Church, all you online too. It's good to see you here, hear you here. We, uh, we'll begin with the prayer, so let us prepare. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, who has rescued us from those who would destroy us. Your power and might are great, and your mercy is poured out on us whom you love. Our help is in your blessed name, O oh, you who have made heaven and earth. We have been entrusted with the way of life, for your word has dwelt among us. But we become so puffed up with our own importance that we ignore the simplest acts of mercy. You have called us to be like salt adding flavor to life. Yet we lose our sense of mission and cease to be all you have called us to be. Deliver us from judgment and forgive our sin that we may live forever in your presence and sing your praises for eternity. By the gift of your spirit, help us to see that we share your task of evangelism with many people from many different places. May our work be done for the common purpose of spreading the gospel of Christ. We lift up before you this day our brothers and sisters who are in distress. By the ministry of laying on of hands and anointing and prayer, we have confidence that as you, your will directs, you will deliver them from evil, preserve them in all goodness, and bring them to everlasting life. O God, turn our sorrow into gladness and our mourning into holiday. Hear and answer us, for we need your help. We pray for your presence and hope in the lives of Diane, Karen, Kathy, and Betty, and Mark Parker. Comfort and care for Caitlin, Scott B., Scott S., and Bodie. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now with the celebration in our hearts, let us repeat the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against you. And deliver us from evil, for thine is the power 
Glory forever. Amen. <laughs> and now we're standing, right? We're, stand, yes. we're stand standing. For the next hymn, uh, Grace is Greater Than All of Our Sins, different from in the, in the bulletin. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilled. Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that is greater than all our sin. Marvelous, infinite, matchless grace. Freely bestowed on all who believe. You who are longing to see his face, will you this moment his grace receive? Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all. Our sin. Seated. The scripture this morning is from James chapter 5. This is our last James uh, sermon and reading. This one is on the prayer of faith. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave, gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from the wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Okay, so I have to tell you that every time I talk about prayer, I always get nervous because I don't know exactly, you know, I see you guys take communion, and I see you, uh, you know, when we have baptisms, I get to see people's faces and how they react, but prayer is something that's very personal, and it's something that we... Uh, that we close in on ourselves when we do it. So I never know exactly how that's going to work. And I think part of the problem that I also have with prayer is that it doesn't have any order. You know, it isn't like first you do this, and then you do this, and then you do this. I mean, they have forms of prayer that are like that, but it's not, you know, it's just something that somebody figured out and decided to do, so it's not anything else. You know, when you talk to customer service, you you either get online and you fill out a form and you tell them what's wrong and they, they uh, send you an email. Or you get on the phone and you tell them what you have and what your account number is and what your problem is and you kind of go through that. And so when they start telling you what's wrong, if they give you steps. Well, first do this, you know, like when your computer isn't working right. You're, you, well, is it on, you know, and is it plugged in? You know, they keep on going like that. So, you know, so it, it's something where there are steps and we feel like we're kind of in control because we've got that, we've got that process going on. But in prayer, you know, it's not as much, as much about steps. Now, 
the, the thing is, prayer is a lot like that if you think about it because, you know, you have prayers of intercession where you pray for others and you pray for them to get better, you pray for them to get a job, you pray for them to go through a, a hard time that they happen to be going through. So, you know, you do that and then you get an answer. And then you have prayers of supplication where you tell God what you need and it happens to be things like a new job or health through the tough times or that life will be better. But there aren't really steps that we can go through to make it happen. We have to trust God. We have to assume and know and trust that God is in the process. So that's what we have to do, and it's hard for us to do because trusting is tough. You know, how do you trust somebody you don't know? Oh, yeah, we're Christians. We're supposed to have a relationship with God. We're supposed to know God and know, know that we need to trust God. And that's what James is talking about. He says, you guys need to pray because you do trust God. And he wants you to pray so you'll know God even better. Because it's in the process of all that praying and asking and seeing what happens and everything that we begin to know more and more about God. So James is encouraging us to pray because God loves us enough to have a relationship with us. You know, God is so powerful. God wouldn't have to have a relationship with us. You know, it could be like the deist thought, you know, God created the earth and put us on here and everything and then left. He went somewhere else, Mars or something, you know, and and so he's not here anymore. But we know that he is. Now, when you look at the list that he gave us, you know, it's things like suffering, sickness, joy, or I call cheerfulness, I call joy, and sin. And when you look at the way he says it in here, it sounds kind of archaic, like uh, the the prayer of the faith will save the sick, and we think it's not that easy. I mean, we've just gone through a horrible year and a half of people catching things and dying and and not having any control over it. We don't feel like we have control over that. It just sounds too simple, too naive. But I've got a story. I've got a couple stories. Gary's grandfather was a saxophone player, and he was a professional. And when he was about young he found Jesus and he began preaching and playing the saxophone and he was quite a a dynamic man and completely unique uh, without fear and I found out that when he was a kid I guess he was in his teens uh, he got appendicitis and it was a really bad attack and they were pretty sure it already uh had uh, exploded and they were, you know, they had to have immediate surgery and he didn't want to have surgery because he was busy. So he, they all started praying and everything and, and the next day he woke up, he didn't have a temperature, he didn't have any pain, there was no, he went home. That was it. So that sounds pretty simplistic too, but for him, God answered his prayers. Now I had a friend and she had stage four cancer for 14 years and every time it would come up they would have a surgery or chemo or something it'd go away she'd be fine for a year maybe two years then she'd have it again and when she went in the hospital for the last time she told me she said don't let anybody say that cancer took me because she said I'm not afraid so I God succeeded because I'm not afraid to die and so you see there that, that she was saved from her suffering even while she was still alive because she was okay with the fact that she was going to die. So it's, it's kind of an interesting thing when we start talking about uh, that faith will save the sick because we, we try to put that into something like they're going to be completely healed. And maybe what it is is they're just going to be um, this because it says this in there. And the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. In death, you are raised up, and you're still saved from your suffering. So there are different ways of looking at this, and it's not that simplistic. One of the most powerful things that James says, I think, is that the prayers of the righteous are powerful powerful and effective. 
And I think that says a lot about what we're supposed to be, which is righteous, which is a tough thing for, for uh, human beings. But then he tells the story of Elijah, and that's why he tells this story, because Elijah was this crutchety, grouchy old man, but he was a prophet in the Old Testament, and he was 100% God's big buddy, and he totally trusted God. He did all kinds of really amazing, odd things in the Old Testament, <clears throat> which gave proof of, of his dedication to God and his desire to help the Jewish people come to God and be prayerful and have a really great relationship with God. So one time he got mad at some people because they were doing bad things, and so he told he wished that it would he prayed that it would stop raining, and of course it did for three and a half years. <clears throat> they figured out that he was powerful that he had an actual connection to God because look what he just did. He stopped the rain. How could he do that? So they began to listen to him and they began to change their ways and they became, became much more close to God. And so uh, he said, okay, well, I think we could have it rain again. And so, so it did. And they listened to him because he was so close to God. And that's what a righteous person is is so close to God that they know the connection between themselves and God is that strong. So what, what we really need to be is we all need to be righteous. And we, then we, you know, we might see the fruit of our prayer more easily. Um, but maybe you already do. Several people in the, our gratitude class on, on Wednesday evenings mentioned that they thought that we just don't pay attention, that our prayers are answered but we just don't pay attention. You know, we ask for something, and I think this probably is true, and then we forget we asked for it. And when it happens, it's like, oh, good, okay. And we forget that we prayed for that. And then we have the idea that, well, maybe it was just a coincidence. John Wesley and James would both tell you that, that there is no such thing as coincidence, that it's God. And we just forgot to pray for it, that we did pray for it, or we uh, didn't accredit it to God. We just thought it was a coincidence. But the next time something happens to be a coincidence, you should say thank you, because I think you would start remembering that that was something that you were concerned about. It was something that was on your mind. It was something that was important, and you had said something, because you know God listens to us even when we're not talking to God. And so that, that's what the Holy Spirit's for. And so that means that we, you know, he hears what we say later on. So that's important. Now, there are enough movies out. I bet you could watch uh, a month's worth of movies, 30, 30 movies, and they would all be the same thing, where some character has done something wrong. They have... They've robbed somebody or killed somebody, maybe by accident, maybe on purpose, but they hid it, and it ate on their conscience. Now, we've all seen these movies. We've also all read these stories. They're even in the Bible. So we know that when we hide our sin, it kills our soul. So that's why he says that we should pray for each other, that we should pay attention to one another. We should, you know, it says confess our sins, which really makes me want to, because that's just too much information. But uh, you've got to really trust somebody to do that. Really trust somebody to confess your sin. And that's what he's saying. Not only should you trust me so much, but you should trust each other so much. Think about that. Everybody in this room should trust each other so much that they can tell them something like that and nobody else knows that they're safe. That would be amazing. So we're supposed to pray for our, even our enemies. And we know that we can do this and God will work in their lives. Now, it's not going to happen immediately, or maybe it is. Or maybe it's not even going to have anything to do with you, or maybe it is. You know, God knows the way of, of working through lives that 
is so far beyond what we're capable of even imagining that we don't really get it, you know. We have to, you know, it's one of those things where people say, you know, I look back on that time and I could see God working in my life. But you can't when it's happening sometimes because you're so absorbed in what is going on that you're not, you don't have that perspective. Now somebody that knows you very, very well might be able to notice it and say, hey, you know, I think this is God working in your life and maybe it'll trigger you to, to pay more attention, but it's, it's something that is very difficult for humans to do is to live in those two areas at once. And so, you know, we have to remember that if we are going to work so hard to be righteous that we might find miracles happening much more often in our lives because we'll actually notice them. So that's what, what James has been working on. You know, his whole, his whole letter has been about wisdom. And so it's not really about the prayer as much as it's the fact that prayer is being wise. And of course it is. So is loving one another, is wise. It's from God. You know, God's not going to waste time giving us something that's not important. And we have to remember that that wisdom means that we should consider our blessings from God and trust God's knowledge, which is not our knowledge. Um, and then we should continue to bless, that God will bless us through God's knowledge and wisdom. Because that's something that God continues to show us over and over again, is how much God loves the humanity, and we continue to get in a scrape and get out of a scrape, get in a scrape, get out of a scrape. And we, we understand that because there's a whole Old Testament full of that stuff about people getting into a scrape and getting back out. And it's only when they call on God. So we know that that is an important thing that we need to do, and it's something that we need to in, initiate in our lives in a strong way. Because when we have a, a consistent prayer life, we can hear how God is working, and we can pray for others because we understand that God is working in their lives. In communal prayer, we have the oppor opportunity to listen for and be God's voice. We can hear God's voice. We can be God's voice for the world. And in prayer as a congregation, we're empowered to carry out our mission, which is to make disciples. But it's only through prayer that we can be inspired enough to do this well. So this is something that we need to do. Because prayer does change lives and relationships. So we need to make it a practice to pray alone and together as a congregation, to understand that this is where the power comes from, is from prayer. And we, aren't, we can't do it on our own. We can't do it effectively on our own. We can't do it powerfully on our own. But we can with God. And how we find that way is through prayer. So we need to walk and we need to live in God's wisdom. Amen. Please stand for the next hymn. It's Shout to the Lord. Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength, let every breath all that I am never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, let the earth let us sing. 
power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Please remain standing for the Apostles Creed. Please join me in the Apostles Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and setteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I do have a few announcements. Okay. Jelly jars. Today's the last day for jelly jars. Last Sunday for jelly jars are going to be disappearing on Wednesday or Thursday. Oh, sit down, please. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> I have to. I have a confession. I had a. Um, I can't remember. It was a special service. I don't think it was a funeral, but I can't remember what it was. But anyway, I started started the service and I never told people to sit down and they stood up the whole time and they never said anything <laughs> I felt so bad when it got to the end and I went started to say oh you can sit down and I thought oh my gosh they've been standing the whole time so all right thank you Jeff so okay trunk or treat we have seven cars and we have um uh, I can tell you right now uh, that there's somebody in this room that I happen to know really well who's got all this stuff he's got for his truck. And uh, so, he, you know, it's going to make it pretty stunning. I also talked to ACO, and they are going to have a truck here uh, for the food collection. So we will have an ACO truck here. So that'll be great, and they probably will need some help with some stuff too. So... We're going to try to make it a big deal this year. Um, and face painters. I need face painters. I know you can paint. If you can paint on a canvas, you can paint on a face. <laughs> so anyway, we, we, I hope to have face painting there too. Okay, October 10th is two weeks away, kind of. And so we are uh, going to have our second Sunday social and it's going to be at two rows so the sign up sheets are outside for you guys to sign up now in october we have two umw sponsored things we have the silver cords are going to be here for a concert at 6 p.m on october 10th and then we have a sewing class on october 13th at 2 p.m where we're gonna there's pictures out there where they're gonna uh, insert a piece of lace and a t-shirt so it should be a lot of fun plus you can talk a whole lot when you're sewing so you know we can have a good time so and I also uh, wanted to remind you about the collecting food for ACO um, it's I don't know if it's because summer jobs are over or whatever but the the need goes up in the fall so uh, if you would uh, consider that we also are having charge conference Sunday at 5.30. Here. Today. Oh, it is today. <laughs> okay, yes, that's right. Today. Thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> and so anyone can attend. It's going to be in the kitchen. It's going to be by Zoom. So 
we'll just be sitting there listening to them. But they actually have a discussion time in there where they're asking, you know, what your church is doing. And so they're expecting people to be there to answer those questions or, or add any any anything to it. So if you, you know, have some ideas or want to hear what's going on, um, that's the time. We have a new uh, district superintendent. Her name is Deborah Hobbs Mason. She went to school when I went to school. So that shows you how she's done. And she is incredibly organized. So it'll be, uh, I'm sure, a great time for us to get to know her. All right, I'm done. Time for the offering. Offering. Yeah. The other thing on my other thing. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. Let us pray. God of the beginning, God of now, and God of what will be, in your claiming us as your own, you have given us the most gracious and powerful invitation to pray to lift all that weighs on our hearts with confidence that you will hear. As we offer gifts to you this morning, we pray that you will be, dedicate them so that they might bring love, compassion, joy, and mercy to people who are in need. Then remind us that we are not done until we have offered to you the prayers of our hearts. In the name of Jesus, our rock and redeemer, amen. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. And blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Have a good week.